All right. So we want to go over a little bit about errors in the trial balance. And let's look, read what it says here, because this, this gives you a false sense of security here. It says, the equality of debits and credits in the ledger should be proven at the end of each accounting period by preparing a trial balance. Well, um, this, is, uh, this is really bad information here. Um, but I'm telling, I'm, I'm, I'm including this because you will find the same information in just about any uh, accounting textbook in the world. I want you to understand that in reality, your trial balance will always balance. If, you know, maybe you, um, your debit is correct and, and one of your credits is wrong, that's okay. You're still going to balance. Your accounting software will not accept a journal entry that does not balance. Now, your homework might, okay, but in the real world, um, that's just not how it's done. If you if you have a debit for for five hundred dollars and the credit is for fifty dollars, your accounting software either won't take the entry at all, and you were in balance before you made the mistake, so you're still going to be in balance, or it'll say, "Hey, you sure you want to do this? You're out of balance," and then you say yes, and it'll take that four hundred and fifty, and it will just send it uh, to a uh, what's called a suspense account. And don't worry if you mess up the debit instead of the credit, it'll do the same thing, just in the other direction. So I want you to understand that when we look at a trial balance, it will always balance. It is impossible for it not to. Again, unless we're doing this on paper in a school setting, something like that, it is always going to balance in the real world. So please be uh, aware of that. Also be aware that balancing in and of itself means very, very little. If we mess up if we get the wrong accounts, you know, if we if we um, if we credit cash when we're supposed to debit it, or we debit it when we're supposed to credit it, and then the other side of that transaction matches, guess what? Our trial balance is gonna is gonna uh, balance. It's gonna be wrong, but it's gonna balance. Okay. So let's get into uh, kind of review some steps, and then. Um, and then we're going to get into some ways that uh, some things that we, we may have to be on the lookout for, uh, even if we follow all of these steps. So uh, some of this stuff you're going to have to do, some of it you're not going to have to do. It says, step one, list the name of the company, the title of the trial balance, and the date of the trial balance is prepared. Okay, so if in reality, this step here, um, you know, you would run a report on your software and you would you would put those dates in. You would be in a certain company file, probably the file of wherever you work. And so this is going to happen on its own. So this is what you would do, I guess, if you were doing this on paper. And you're not going to be doing it on paper. Step two, list the accounts from the ledger and enter their debit or credit balance in the debit or credit column of the trial balance. Again, this is something that you would do if you were working this out on paper. In reality, um, you're going to be doing this in a computerized setting, and uh, any account that has a balance will automatically be there. Total the debit and credit columns of the trial balance. This will be done for you automatically. Verify that the total of the debit columns equals the total of the credit column, and they will. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been able to make the journal entry in the first place. Okay, so these are the steps if we were to take a step back in time and visit, I don't know, 1974 or something, and we were working on paper. In reality, this is an automated process, and we don't have to do a lot of these things. That doesn't mean that we can just use the computer uh, to do everything for us. We still have to... Uh, visually scan our trial balance to see that it actually makes sense. For example, um, our cash balance on the trial balance uh, should match our adjusted cash balance uh, from our from our bank statement, and so on. Okay, if we look down through our trial balance and we we have uh, accounts payable with a debit balance. Well, we probably have a mistake. OK, 
okay? So on and so forth. If, if wage expense for, um, for, say, a month is half of what it has always been, well, we probably made a mistake somewhere. So let's look here at errors affecting the trial balance. We have what's called a transposition. This occurs when the order of digits is copied incorrectly, such as writing 542 as 452 or 524. Now, it, let's say that, that it's supposed to be 452 and you enter it as 542. You would have to make this mistake in the journalizing process more than once. Um, but if you did that, it would be accepted and you would balance, okay? You would be wrong. And the scary thing here is that it's only $90 or in this case, only $18. We might not, we might never, we might never find this mistake, okay? Depending on exactly what the figures are that we're dealing with. So transposition can be a serious problem. In a slide, the entire number is copied incorrectly. Uh, one or more spaces to the right or left, such as writing $542 uh, as $54.20 or 5420. These errors, while they may be uh, bigger in terms of dollar amounts, they're also easier to catch because of that. Uh, so, um, I just want you to understand that if you make either of these mistakes, these are both valid errors that will affect the trial balance. You will still balance, but it will it will be at an incorrect amount. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Errors not affecting the trial balance. Uh, let's see what it says. Errors that do not cause the trial balance totals to be unequal may be discovered when. Uh, preparing the trial balance or maybe indicated by unusual account balances. Um, for example, you cannot have negative supplies. So if we have a credit balance and an asset account such as supplies, we know that we have mixed up our, our debits and credits somewhere more than likely, more than likely. Okay. We can fix that by making what's called a correcting journal entry, where we basically just go in and, um, you know, let's say that we uh, meant to, that we had credited supplies expense um, instead, of, instead of debiting it. And we had only done that one time. And we said, well, credit, you know, supplies expense has a, has a credit balance of $200, I, and then you, you find out that it should be $200, well, you could make a correcting entry uh, for $400. And, uh, and when you did that, the $400 plus the negative $200 would give you the $200 expense that you were looking for in the first uh, place. That's just one of countless examples, okay? What else do we have here? Uh, errors not affecting the trial balance. I guess we have an example here. So assume on May 5th, a $12,500 purchase of office equipment on account was incorrectly journalized and posted as a debit to supplies and a credit to accounts payable for $12,500. Okay. Um, so let's see what we have here. It says the, the entry to correct the error is as follows. This one's a little bit easier since we're dealing with two assets. Um, we would simply, uh, at this point, we would then go in and debit the office equipment for $12,500. That gets it on the books. By crediting supplies here for that, for that same $12,500, it removes $12,500 worth of supplies from the trial balance. So, you know, if we were looking at this trial balance, let's say that we normally had supplies uh, amounts month to month anywhere from $1,000 to $2,000. And all of a sudden we look at supplies and it was at, let's say, $13,200. That would be a pretty good indication. In other words, we're going to balance. Our assets are going to be correct. Are, are, you know, everything is going to be right in total in terms of dollar amounts, but to the wrong accounts. 
So this is how we would uh, correct that. Again, this is actually an easier example because we're just we're dealing both of these items are assets. Whenever we start mixing up um, expenses with liabilities and those types of things, it's a little bit harder. Uh, but any mistake can be corrected. All right, that's it for this chapter, and we'll get some uh, uh, handouts available and some handout video uh, solutions up shortly.